Hi guys, welcome to part two of my Premiere Pro tutorial for, well, Let's Playing pretty much. I'm going to go over a few of the basics, what I use when I use Premiere Pro for making Let's Plays. I'm not going to go over any of the more advanced features because they're usually not needed. This is strictly a basics tutorial. If you read the first part, uh, you've uh, figured out the project settings and once you've done all that and mashed OK a few bunch of times, this is what you end up with, hopefully. Maybe your Windows or whatever looks a bit different. Maybe it looks like this, which is the workspace for color correction. We don't want this because we're not color correcting. We want to edit. So make sure you go to Window, Workspace, Edit if your windows don't look like mine. And once you've done that, hopefully everything will look pretty much the same. Uh, there are gonna be a few differences depending on what version, version of Premiere Pro you have, but everything should look pretty much like this. Over here, we have the uh, project window. This is where all your assets for your projects are gonna be located. That means video, audio, pictures, stuff like that. This is your source window. This is where you uh, cut or select video, audio, and add some effects. Um, this is the program window or preview window. If you press play here, whatever you have down here in the timeline window is going to play from your selection and onwards. Um, and that brings us to the timeline window. The timeline window shows our different sequences. We can have multiple, right now we only have one, and our different video and audio tracks in that timeline. Uh, over here we have um, some audio gauges to show us how loud our audio is. This is really good because you don't want your audio to be too loud. Um, and here are our tools. We're going to be using two or three of them, not very many. And here's our media browser info history and effects panel. This won't be used much. Of course, that's a lot to take in, but rest assured, it's pretty simple. The first thing we want to do is import our assets. And that's the video with Fraps of us playing and probably um, some commentary tracks from maybe Audacity or something else. And we can do this in a few different ways. We can go to File, Import, we can right click here and press Import, or we can do what's the absolute the easiest thing to do and just go to our uh, project folder and then pick whatever we want. We want good.wave because that's our commentary and we want uh, Crater and that's it for right now. So, so we'll just drag and drop these two into uh, into Premiere Pro. And if you do this for the first time, uh, Premiere Pro is going to do a little thing down here and it's going to take a while for the audio to show up properly. Uh, shouldn't take too long, but it does need to cache a few things. This isn't happening right now because I've already done that. Uh, this is our video, of course, uh, which we want uh, down here. So uh, we can just drag and drop it. And this is my whole frap session of when I played uh, Crater a while back. Uh, and what we're going to do today is edit the first part of this particular session, which is session six. As you can see, it's over one and a half hours long, and I've actually made three, uh, three introduction and ends in the commentary. So we're going to do the first one. Now, uh, I us when I record, I usually start by recording my commentary in Audacity, and then once I get into the game, I say into my microphone, recording fraps in 3, 2, 1, now, and then on now I press recording fraps. This means that my audio file that I got here is a tad bit longer, and just by pulling it down here, it's not going to sync up with whatever's on screen. That means we need to cut this uh, to fit. And this is done in the source window. You can do this with uh, video as well. Uh, I know a lot of people do. I prefer to cut my video in, in the timeline, but when it comes to audio, I just find it easy to do this. Now this shows as well, one hour and 31 minutes of, uh, of commentary. So it's gonna be really hard to, to cut in. Luckily, it's easy to zoom in by just uh, pressing down here and pulling this in. 
Now I know that I don't talk that much before I actually start recording. Uh, if we listen here, starting audio. Yeah, that's me saying starting audio. And I think over here we have me saying, "Okay, uh, okay." Apparently, let's see what's going on over here. Starting video in three, two, one, now. So, uh, let's zoom in some more. So this is apparently the now right here, and this is our selection tool. This shows up both here and here. Uh, so, and. I'm guessing I'm pressing the button about in the middle of when I'm saying now. So I want I want the rest of this file here. Um, now, what you do a lot in Premiere Pro and other editing programs is that you pick in points and out points. And I edit a lot, so I use the keyboard shortcuts, which is I for in point and O for out point, point which conveniently are located next to each other on a keyboard. Uh, so you can either do that, or you can use the buttons here, set in point. So we mash that, and since Premiere Pro by default, when you pull something into the source window, if you haven't already set in points and out points, just selects the whole clip, put the in point at the start of the clip, and the out point at the end of the clip. So as long as I select the in point, right here it's going to select the rest of the clip, which is why uh, this is highlighted. Now I want to pull this down here into my audio track. And I do this by drag audio only. Since there's only audio here, we can use that. Had it been a video, we could have dragged only video or both. There would be more icons showing up here. And this seems to fit much better. So let's zoom in. Let's go over the timeline quickly uh, before we do anything else and before I forget it, because this is important. Uh, right here is where this uh, selection tool is on the timeline. If you want to go to a specific place on the timeline, you can just manually type that in. These are our three video tracks, uh, and here are our audio tracks. These uh, single speaker icons here indicate that these two are mono tracks, which my commentary is, and these two with two here are stereo, which my game audio is. And uh, you can't mix mono and stereo on the same track. So if you do have a lot of audio, or if you do have a lot of video, you probably want to add some more, which you can do by right-clicking here, or, well, pretty much here. As long as it's not over, apparently you can do it here as well. And just go to Add Tracks, and, well, let's add another video track, shall we? And another video track is added. If you feel that there are too many, we can delete tracks. And let's delete all empty video tracks. Boom! But I do want a second video track. <laughs> I'm going to fix that right away. So that's important. This icon here is pretty important. This is the snap icon. This pretty much means that if you have more video or audio assets on the same track, and if you pull them, they snap to each other like magnets. You can see the little white arrow uh, in the top between the two clips. And I can snap it to audio as well, which is really nice. As you can see, that indicates that it snaps. If you don't want it to snap, uh, unselect that. But we like snapping right now. Uh, as I showed before, this is the zoom feature, which is really useful. And these are just bars to show off the whole, like, uh, to scroll, pretty much. And up here we have a time, time code indicator, so we know about how far into the timeline we are. And... That might have been a bit much, but that's pretty much all there is to the timeline. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, these are our uh, outputs. Uh, we can toggle them on or off. Like, if I click this and remove the eye, there's no video showing. And we can do the same thing with audio. So if we don't want to hear my, me babbling on about Crater, uh, we can just unclick that, and this audio track won't be audible. Lastly, maybe, uh, and actually we do, what we're going to do right now is do some actual editing. Uh, like I said, this whole video here is one and a half hours long, and I've actually done three intros and outros. So we want to make sure our first intro is at the start of the video. Right now, our start of the video is me saying now, 
Then there's a break, and then I start talking. Listen to this. Ow. Hi guys, I'm Knorr, welcome. Yeah. So, starting with an ow. Hi guys, I'm Knorr, is not as... I could make it look better. So what we want to do is we want to actually start over here. And we can do this in a few different ways. Uh, we, we can cut this bit out with the racer. This is the racer tool. You can either click here or press C to get the racer tool. And the racer tool works like this. Just click anywhere on anything and it will make a cut. I'm going to select the pointer again. And okay. Right here there's a cut now. So I can move this. Sorry. I can move this independently of the rest of the clip. I couldn't do that before because it was all connected. So you can you can either cut and then select the clip and press delete and that's no more. Or you can if it's if you want to trim the edge of a clip, either the start or the end, you can go to the start or the end of the clip and wait until you get this icon right here which uh, allows you to pull the clip in. It doesn't actually move the clip. Everything is in the same Position, you just say, ah, I don't want this bit, uh, just start over here instead. So what we do now is, let's see how this start looks and sounds. Hi guys, I'm Knorr, welcome back to Let's Play Crater. It so that's way better. Uh, it goes right into me introducing what we're doing. We have another problem though, since the timeline now starts with a few seconds of darkness, and we don't want that either, so we need to move all of this all the way over here. And we can do that either by just pulling on stuff, like so. But if we do that, now these two are out of sync again. This is, of course, easily fixed because I can just do that and it's um, it's working again. Uh, and it's in sync. But to make sure that everything stays in sync if they're not trimmed exactly the same, you can use this tool right here. This tool works a tad bit differently. It's the track select tool, and what this does is it actually moves the whole track. Let's add some more video here. So with the track selection tool, as you can see, that just follows along. Now, unfortunately, the track selection tool only works for one track. So, so what do we do? How do we make it work for everything? We hold down shift, and now it works for everything. It works for everything after what you've selected, which might be a bit confusing, but let's let's add that video again. Okay, so we got a tiny bit of video here at the front and nothing at the back right now. So if I use the track selection tool and try and select everything, it doesn't select whatever is in front of it, it only selects what you clicked on and everything afterwards. Um, so that might get a bit tricky if you have like a clip that ends here. It's a bit fiddly, but as long as you don't have too much, it's not a big deal. One final way to do it is just to to uh, s try and select everything and then just pull. And it works the same. And now we're at the front, which is excellent. Now we want to find the outro. And what I usually do when I record is that if I know I'm going to do a longer recording session, and I know I'm going to record maybe three episodes in a row, I usually shut up after an outro. Uh, so I can then look at my audio track here and see if there are any empty spaces like, hmm, right here. So let's zoom in on that and see what I'm talking about right over here. So we can boot camp it up. I've been Knorr you've been watching Let's Play Creator. Okay, so that's clearly the end. We don't want this bit, though, where I remove my headset to go get more tea. We want this bit where I almost swallow my own words. So let's listen to that again. Pip it up. I've been Knorr, you've been watching Let's Play Crater. So, Crater. Yeah, so if I pull along this, you can hear my own voice. Crater. Crater. So that's where it ends. So this is where we want the episode to end. So I'm going to use the racer tool again by pressing C on the keyboard. And then I'm going to use the track selection tool, holding down shift, 
and pulling everything apart. And now we have a nice end and then we have some trimming we need to do on the intro, but we're not going to do that right now. I think you can figure it out on your own. You've already seen me trim one intro. So now we have the actual episode trimmed. What we want to do now is make sure that the audio and the commentary, the game audio and the commentary work about the same way. And if you're not good at just listening, this meter here is a good way of making sure that you're not too loud. Let's listen to this. Focus now. and focus. Okay. We should probably start up the game audio again. I had it uh, I had it muted. That is good. As you mean, yes. Okay, so apparently the game audio is kind of drowning me out. And I know for a fact that I want my uh, my commentary when I'm speaking to peak out at about minus six. And to do that, I'm gonna mute my game audio again. Let's let's listen to me talk over here. I'm just gonna keep trucking here because even though we have it, yeah. So if you listen I mean, to, even though, oh. yeah. So if if we scroll here, we can see that I I almost peak out. That's the that's the short upper green line. That's where I peak. I peak around my between minus twelve and minus six. So I'm gonna. What I want to do is I want to increase my audio by about six decibel. The way I do this is by right clicking on the audio track and going to audio gain, and then setting my gain to six. You can see me uh, keep my audio here, and it's keep trucking here because even though we have everything I... it's already way louder so now let's add our game audio and see if we need to change anything i'm just gonna keep trucking here because even though we have everything i feel like yeah i feel the game audio is still a bit loud i mean you can clearly hear what i'm saying but it's kind of they're kind of competing so i'm gonna lower the game audio a bit and this is pretty much going by field, but I'm going to lower it by minus six. And we'll, we'll listen to that again. Uh, it, it's a good tip to listen to a quiet point uh, bit first. Minus 30. I'm just going to keep trucking here, because even though we have everything, I feel like there might be some more cool stuff that we can... I reckon it's still a bit loud. So you go back and forth here and just uh, try and find whatever you think is a good medium. I'm not going to lecture you on what it, what's the proper one because honestly, I'm not that great at it. I just mess around and see what works. And I think that's about it for basic Premiere Pro video editing for a Let's Play. There's not that much more to it. There are some more fancy stuff that we're going to cover. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, at a later point. We're going to go over the effects because there are some, some things I want to show off. How to add a cool title, like a title screen if you want, or just some subtitles for some parts in, an, in another episode. And we're going to talk about how to export our lovely crafted Let's Play video from Premiere Pro. Because we're not going to use Premiere Pro, we're going to use AVI Synth and a uh, me gooey m e gooey m -E gooey whatever we're going to use that but that's in another episode i hope this has been partly uh informative and that you all got something out of it uh i really like premiere pro it might take a while to get used to but you actually get really fast in it really quickly and it's a really useful program even though it looks boring and gray <laughs>